Welcome to another episode of the True Crime Tales. Today's episode is called, The Ponzi Scheme and Sam Bankman-Fried. Sam Bankman-Fried was born on March 6, 1992, in California. The son of two professors at Stanford Law School, Bankman-Fried grew up in a highly educated family. He attended high school at Crystal Springs Upland School in Hillsboro, California. He also participated in a summer academic program for gifted high school students in mathematics. Bankman Fried graduated from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 2014 with a degree in physics and a minor in mathematics. In the summer of 2013, he worked as an intern for New York, based Jane Street Capital, where he returned to the proprietary trading firm as a full-time employee after graduating. While attending Stanford, Caroline Ellison began her career in quantitative trading with two internships at Jane Street. In September 2016, Ellison joined Jane Street full-time as an equities trader in a cohort mentored by Sam Bankman-Fried, who left the firm a year later to serve as Director of Development at the Center for Effective Altruism, commonly known as CEA located in Berkeley, California. Ellison and Bankman-Fried bonded over interest in effective altruism and remained in contact. In September 2017, Bankman-Fried left Jane Street and moved to Berkeley, California, where he worked briefly at the Center for Effective Altruism as Director of Development from October to November 2017. In November 2017, following fund injections from billionaire computer programmer John Tallinn and investor Luke Ding, Bankman Fried and CEA's Tara Headley co-founded the quantitative trading firm Alameda Research. In January 2018, Bankman Fried organized an arbitrage trade, moving up to $25 million per day to take advantage of the higher price of Bitcoin in Japan compared to the United States. After attending a cryptocurrency conference in Macau in late 2018, he moved to Hong Kong. Ellison and Bankman Fried bonded over interest in effective altruism and remained in contact. In February 2018, while visiting the San Francisco Bay Area, Ellison met Bankman Fried for coffee and he pitched her on joining Alameda Research a cryptocurrency hedge fund co-founded in November 2017 by Bankman Fried and effective altruism colleague Tara McAuley. Ellison joined the following month. She said her blind leap was based on excitement over arbitraging cryptocurrencies and the potential to further her pursuit of earning to give. When she joined, Ellison had more experience than most of the other traders. She became co-CEO along with Sam Trabuco in October 2021. She became the sole CEO of Alameda Research in August 2022 after Trabuco stepped down. Despite her position, Ellison received no equity in Alameda Research and only a 0.5% stake in FTX. As of 2021, Bankman Fried owned approximately 90% of Alameda Research. Bankman Fried founded the FTX Cryptocurrency Derivatives Exchange in April 2019. It opened for business the following month. In March 2021, an $80 million deal between Alameda Research and another cryptocurrency firm, Reef Finance, collapsed due to a dispute over the validity of the contract and the vesting period for the digital tokens being exchanged. Danko Mancheski, the chief executive officer of Reef Finance, accused Alameda Research of violating the terms of the deal by immediately selling the first tranche of tokens, worth approximately $20 million, 
on the digital currency exchange Binance. Almost all cryptocurrency and other digital asset transactions are permanently recorded on a digital ledger called a blockchain. In a statement to the cryptocurrency financial news site Coindesk, Mancheski also claimed that all agreements between Reef and Alameda had been verbal only, communicated through a messaging app, and that Alameda had produced no legal agreement or any kind of paperwork. Regarding Alameda's business practices, Mancheski claimed that they portray themselves as a reputable VC, venture capital, fund while in reality they just manipulate projects slash retail using their reputation. Alameda denied that any vesting period had been agreed upon and claimed that Reef was responsible for reneging on the deal. FTX Trading Limited commonly known as FTX which was short for Futures Exchange, that operated a cryptocurrency exchange and crypto hedge fund. At its peak in July 2021, the company had over 1 million users and was the third largest cryptocurrency exchange by volume. FTX is incorporated in Antigua and Barbuda and headquartered in the Bahamas. FTX is closely associated with FTX.US, a separate exchange available to U.S. residents. In September 2021, Bankman Freed and the entire senior staff of FTX moved from Hong Kong to the Bahamas. During this time, he had built a $35 million crypto frat house to live in. He shared with nine people, including friends from high school, an ex-girlfriend, college roommates, and top execs at FTX and sister hedge fund Alameda Research. The group was cliquey and became even more intimate during the COVID outbreak as the 20-somethings fled Hong Kong to ride out the pandemic in the Caribbean. They freely mixed work with pleasure and some reports of their shared time together on the island of New Providence chronicle sexual explorations. The orchid is widely regarded as the crown jewel of the Albany, an oceanside resort that spans 600 acres and reportedly boasts a consortium of celebrity backers, including Tiger Woods and Justin Timberlake. Its ultra-rich residents ride around in golf carts, moving from their home to one of the many restaurants and then to the beach or paddle courts, where they can play a sport that's a mix of tennis and squash. The penthouse had ensuite bathrooms, walk-in closets, Venetian plaster walls and Italian marble floors, along with a balcony-lined perimeter with its own private spa, outdoor pool and jacuzzi. At night, its penthouse was lit purple, and the purple light made it seem glamorous and elicited envy even from those accustomed to being envied. It was depicted as more of a flophouse with one wall obscured by a row of computer monitors whose cords snaked across the marble like jungle vines. A Coindesk journalist, who visited the apartment in September 2022, described the scene as a cross between a luxury dorm room and a jury-rigged trading floor, adding that the curved marble living room was rimmed with computer desks each supporting various configurations of conjoined monitors. Outside of the Albany were six stadium-lit padel courts. It was there that Bankman Freed and others spoke about concerns he had about the business. The stated reason for FTX's relocation to the Bahamas was the friendly regulatory environment and Bankman Freed openly discussed paying off the country's $9 billion national debt. He said that his and his company's advocacy for crypto regulation was not sincere and was just PR, adding those regulators make everything worse and don't protect customers at all. On his ethics staff, 
He agreed it was mostly a front and described ethics as a dumb game we woke Westerners play where we say all the right shibboleths, and so everyone likes us. As the cryptocurrency world burst into prominence during the COVID-19 pandemic, Bankman Freed and his Bahamas-based company thrived. FTX acquired the Blockfolio exchange and platform in 2020 for $150 million. FTX's user base expanded, and Bankman Freed appeared to be on a solid foundation in the otherwise usually turbulent cryptocurrency markets. During a subsequent wave of crypto failures, Bankman Freed offered a financial lifeline to cryptocurrency exchange BlockFi saving it from a major liquidity crisis. Bankman Freed bought the failed crypto lending platform Voyager and made an offer for the assets of Celsius, which went bankrupt at the same time. He also acquired Ledger X, a derivative trading platform that was never fully integrated into FTX. Bankman-Fried and FTX was known as the firm that was holding the crypto exchange together by bailing out these struggling and going bankrupt firms. Alameda Research CEO Caroline Ellison was romantically involved with Bankman-Fried until their final split on April 15, 2022. According to Forbes, Bankman Freed had an estimated peak net worth of $26.5 billion. In June 2022, it was reported to Bankman Freed on Signal that showed $8 billion in customer money held in an internal database tracking the cash wired to an Alameda account called fiat at ftx.com was missing. While Bankman Freed appeared worried or nervous, they trusted Bankman Freed and Ellison to handle the situation. By the turn of the decade, Bankman Freed had established himself as a donor to be reckoned with. Already a billionaire in 2020, he began donating large sums to U.S. political campaigns, including millions of dollars to Joe Biden's presidential campaign that year. In the 2022 midterm election cycle, Bankman Freed was the second largest individual donor to Democratic campaigns. He also gave to a large variety of causes, favoring projects with potential future payouts for humanity such as pandemic preparedness over those that would alleviate immediate suffering such as providing mosquito nets to prevent malaria. He caught the ear of several members of the U.S. Congress, where he twice formally testified on the regulation of digital currencies, first in December 2021 and again in February 2022. In his testimonies, he advised Congress to build a regulatory framework around existing policy, with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission as the primary regulator and in a flexible manner that could respond to the evolving nature of the digital assets market. Bankman Freed describes himself as a follower of utilitarian philosophy and cites 19th century English social reformer Jeremy Bentham as one of his inspirations. Bankman Freed credits his parents, both of whom are law professors at Stanford University in California with introducing him to utilitarian ideas. He was also a signer of Bill Gates' Giving Pledge, in which Gates invited billionaires to commit to give the majority of their wealth to philanthropy either during their lifetimes or in their wills. During the 2020 presidential election cycle, Bankman Freed gave approximately $5.2 million to the campaign of former Vice President Joe Biden. Yahoo Finance reported that the contribution made him one of the largest individual donors to the Biden campaign, second only to former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Other political action committee receiving Bankman Freed's support in 2022 included the House Majority Committee, $6 million, 
GMI Committee 2 million, America United 1.3 million, and the Senate Majority Committee 1 million. Critics of Bankman Freed have observed that his sudden interest in making political contributions during 2022 coincided with the start of efforts by lawmakers to regulate cryptocurrency. Bankman Freed is one of several crypto donors who have started spending large amounts of money in politics seemingly out of nowhere, just as the industry comes under scrutiny. The American prospect also questioned the timing of Bankman Freed's emergence as a political giver, saying it doesn't take deep-seated cynicism to realize that the motivations of FTX's CEOs go well beyond preventing the next pandemic. We are at a critical moment for crypto, as lawmakers ponder how to determine oversight of the industry. However, much of that value was tied to the value of FTX and its FTT cryptocurrency token. During a long down market for cryptocurrency that followed, Bankman Fried saw his net worth fall to around $16 billion as of late 2022 in the months and weeks just before his firm's collapse. Around November 9, 2022, a new site handling Bitcoin and digital currencies called Coindesk reported that Alameda Research held a significant amount of FTT and that these FTT holdings made up a considerable portion of their assets. Coindesk reported that there were $5.1 billion worth of FTT tokens in circulation and that Alameda's balance sheet held $3.66 billion of unlocked FTT, $2.16 billion of FTT collateral, and $292 million of locked FTT. Following months of arguments and disagreements between Changpeng Zhao, the CEO of Binance, and Bankman Freed, tensions between the two had intensified days before the crisis. 31. Zhao's firm Binance had obtained $2.1 billion in Binance USD and FTT coins in 2021, following a deal in which FTX bought back an equity stake held by Binance in FTX, and in early November 2022 it had 23 million FTT tokens, worth about $529 million at the time. On November 7, 2022, it was announced that Binance had intended to sell its holdings in FTT. The sale of Binance holdings in FTT, compounded with the low trading volume of FTT and the enmity between Binance and Bankman Freed, resulted in the price of the token plummeting. The announcement by Binance of the pending sale and disputes between them on Twitter led to a decline in the price of FTT and other cryptocurrencies, resulting in $6 billion of customer withdrawals from FTX. FTX became unable to meet the demand for further withdrawals, and on November 8th, Bankman Freed and Zhao jointly announced Binance had entered into a non-binding agreement to purchase FTX to ensure that customers could recover their assets in a timely manner. On November 9th, Bloomberg called the acquisition of FTX by Binance unlikely due to the poor state of FTX's finances. Bloomberg also reported that the United States Securities and Exchange Commission and Commodity Futures Trading Commission were investigating the nature of FTX's connections to Bankman Freed's other holdings and its handling of client funds. Later that day, the Wall Street Journal reported that Binance would not move forward with the deal to acquire FTX. Binance cited FTX's reported mishandling of customer funds and pending investigations of FTX as the reasons for not pursuing the deal. Bankman Freed said in a Slack message that FTX had learned through the press about Binance's concerns and decision. On November 10, Axios reported that FTX approached Kraken for a potential rescue deal. 
Bankman-Fried made several statements on November 10, taking responsibility for FTX's failure and indicating that FTX was attempting to raise $10 billion in emergency financing to remain solvent. Bankman-Fried also announced that Alameda Research would cease trading and end operations. FTX's in-house legal and compliance teams had, for the most part, resigned by November 10. Anonymous sources cited by the Wall Street Journal on November 10 said that Alameda Research owed FTX some $10 billion, as FTX had lent funds placed on the exchange for trading to Alameda so that Alameda could make investments with the money. On November 11, FTX, FTX US, Alameda Research, and more than 100 affiliates filed for bankruptcy in Delaware. Between $1 billion and $2 billion in customer funds reportedly could not be accounted for as of November 12. FTX's balance sheet shortly before the bankruptcy showed $9 billion in liabilities against $900 million in liquid assets. On December 12, 2022, Bankman Fried was arrested shortly after 6 p.m. in his apartment complex in New Providence, Bahamas by the Royal Bahamas Police Force, with the expectation that he would be extradited to the United States to face trial. The arrest took place the day before Bankman Fried was scheduled to appear before the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services, but Forbes obtained and published his prepared testimony. After being held at Fox Hill Prison in Nassau for 10 days, Bankman Fried consented to his extradition from the Bahamas to the United States to face charges. He was allowed to remain free on a $250 million bond, the largest such bond ever set in an American criminal proceeding. Among the conditions was that he would stay at his parents' home in California. Prior to August 11, 2023, Bankman Fried was out on bail and living with his parents under court-ordered restrictions. On July 26, 2023, prosecutors alleged witness tampering after Bankman Fried gave a reporter personal writing of former Alameda Research CEO Caroline Ellison. Three weeks later, on August 11, after Judge Kaplan concluded that witness tampering had likely occurred, he revoked Bankman Fried's bail. Bankman Fried was led from the courtroom in handcuffs and remanded into custody at the Metropolitan Detention Center, Brooklyn. On August 22, 2023, Bankman Fried's counsel averred that his client was not being provided a vegan diet and that his medications for ADHD and depression were running low. He added that Bankman Fried could not prepare for the trial subsisting on bread, water, and peanut butter. By November it was reported he had access to a vegetarian diet, had access to prescription drugs, and that he was participating in the Mac economy by buying packets of mackerel from the prison commissary and exchanging them for services from other prisoners, such as a haircut. The trial began on October 3, 2023, at the Manhattan Federal Court, presided over by Judge Lewis Kaplan. Bankman Fried faced seven counts of fraud and conspiracy. The trial was summarized as a question of whether Bankman Fried is a crypto criminal mastermind or just an unlucky math nerd. Bankman Fried was accused of having stole billions from thousands of people by funneling customers' money from FTX into Alameda to fund investments, loan repayments, real estate, and political donations. The defense, on the other hand, told the story of a young but earnest entrepreneur critically out of his depth. Bankman Fried, they said, worked 12 to 22 hours a day, didn't drink or party, and wanted to fund more work on pandemic prevention. 
A series of mistakes from him and his inexperienced executive team, a devastating market crash, and adversarial action from external parties caused his companies to spiral into bankruptcy. But at no point, they insisted, was there any intention to commit fraud. The trial ended on November 2, 2023, with the jury pronouncing Bankman-Fried guilty on all seven counts. The sentencing hearing is scheduled for March 28, 2024. Federal criminal court sentencing experts speculated on the potential amount of prison time likely to be meted out. A second trial, on five charges, including bank fraud and bribery, was originally scheduled for early March 2024. These charges were brought by federal prosecutors after Bankman-Fried was extradited from the Bahamas in December 2022. Bankman-Fried had asked for these charges to be dismissed because they were not part of the extradition agreement with Bahamian authorities, or alternatively he requested that they be resolved under a separate trial. Prosecutors subsequently decided not to proceed in the interest of the victims, who wanted a quicker resolution to the first trial sentencing phase. Furthermore, a second trial would not affect how much time Bankman-Fried could face in prison under recommended federal guidelines. Sam Bankman-Fried was found guilty on all seven counts Thursday after a massive fraud and money laundering trial involving now-collapsed crypto exchange FTX and trading firm Alameda Research, charges that can lead to a maximum of 110 years in prison. Stay tuned again next week for another episode of The True Crime Tales. Be safe and see you again next time.